Okay, so this is our empathy training theme three, and we're on chapter four for this uh, meeting. And we invite anyone who is watching this to join us. We're working on designing an empathy training uh, curriculum, an online curriculum, a, a MOOC, which is a massive online open course. And this is one of our uh, training design teams, uh, number three. And uh, so we want to begin with uh, setting our intention. So the intention for this uh, group and meeting is to build a culture of empathy. And the culture of empathy is, uh, at, the, at its core, is that everyone feels heard and seen and acknowledged uh, to their satisfaction and can authentically express themselves. And we get a thumbs up if that works for our in basic intention. That oh. work? Does that work, Stefan? Do we got a thumbs up? Okay, I think I saw a nodding of the head. And you know, we're flexible about the intention, so I mean the, what it means. Uh, and so we wanna set our intention. We, ha we light this uh, candle here just to remind us and to hold the intention. I do this in our empathy circles, like our mediation circles, like family mediations set this in the middle and always reminds everyone that we're here to foster empathic connection. Okay. And um, so let's just uh, take a minute just to self-connect. Um, just, uh, you know, I know Stefan is, was rushing around, he had a lot of work and just came, woke up from a nap. We've all been rushing around, so if we just, Take a minute for a little bit of self-connection. Kind of notice the felt experience in our body. I always like to start with the breath. Uh, empathy is feeling into, you know, feeling into ourselves. So a bit of self-connection. So we're doing a bit of self-empathy. Just feel, you know, how are we doing? Maybe do a <clears throat> body scan, what are your, how are you feeling in your body? We'll just take a minute of uh, silence, just to self-connect. And take a couple of deep breaths and come back into the group. And I don't know if, uh, Stefan, if you were here in the other meeting where we were just doing a little bit of mirrored motion. Uh, so uh, practice, exercise, and what we do is, what was the feeling? Take a, a feeling that you had in this, in, in this self-connection and translate it into a, a, a motion. And we kind of go around and share that motion. Because feeling is, we're doing a little bit of self-connection, self-empathy, self-expression, turning that feeling into a motion. And then we get kind of a mirrored empathy. So this is my motion, sort of a, so, so, we, get, so we just kind of mirror it if you're feeling oh. comfortable. Yeah, I just. Oh. Okay. It's, just, it, <laughs> it's good for self-expression. It creates a kind of a mirrored resonance, you know, because the, when we mirror each other, we get that uh, releases oxytocin, right? Okay. So we're kind of fostering kind of this uh, physical empathy, plus sitting, you know, we're sitting, it, uh, it this kind of gets us into uh, some kind of motion. So thank okay. you. I feel seen. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm closer to you now. Yeah, you're feeling closer, you're feeling that resonance. <laughs> so Mimi, do you have a motion? 
Um, I would say that I have the image of uh, a calm sea. So I would say it's like something like this inside of me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the feeling. Okay. <laughs> just, yeah, the sea is calm. So we just mirror that till she feels seen, till we get it. Does yeah. it, do we have, are we doing it right? Yes, right. Thank you, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. You're up, Stefan. What's yours? What? Uh, what's I'm yours? Up? What's your motion? Something violent. Okay. Something violent. <laughs> do it. Do it. Let's just let it out. <laughs> violent after meditation. <laughs> How is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you feel seen? Did we get it? <laughs> you yeah. Gotta let you. us know that we got it. That we're doing it right. Okay. I'm sorry well, that mine's different from. I'm sorry that we're in different places. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is it. It's like wherever you are is where you are, and everything is okay. Positive, <laughs> unconditional regard and authentic self-expression <laughs> is is part of it here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, just go around and uh, do a check-in to build on that. Like, how's everyone doing? I'll uh, start with, uh, uh, we had some real sadness. I just feel some grief come up that, you know, you heard of the shootings that uh, happened in uh, uh, Annapolis at the newspaper. I don't know if you heard of that. There was five journalists were shot. And one of the people is uh, my uh, partner's cousin. So. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, feel quite sad about it. And it was someone that I knew, you know, who, I mean, I didn't know him very well, but we had, I had written this and sent it in the email that uh, just about three months ago, I had, he had, we sat at uh, Joan's uh, part, uh, mother's, uh, she was in hospice, 93, dying of a cerebral hemorrhage. And so we, we went there and it was in Pennsylvania and we, you know, we're just sitting kind of vigil at her bedside and and Gerald and I were, you know, would sometimes there would be alone and just be, you know, be talking with them. And so, um, you know, I got to know him a little bit. And he was very close to Joan's mother because uh, his family, he was the only child and, you know, when it died. So um, anyway, so it's a real, you know, Joan's having a real trouble with it, you know, difficulty and you know, it's just sense of sadness. Um, so I feel feel that a little bit. So that's, uh, other than that, I, I find I'm channeling everything into working on the empathy work. So that's kind of where my hope and energy and direction uh, and kind of gets channeled into. So I'm, I'm excited that everyone's here and a little sad that the others couldn't make it. And because it's always nice to have a bigger team, but you know, this is really nice too. So glad to see everyone. So did you choose a per Did you choose choose a person to? Uh, oh, we're just check we're just checking in without reflection. We'll do the reflection <clears throat> on the chapters. So just a check in. So, uh, Mimi. Uh, I'm very happy as usual. <laughs> uh, yesterday I had the chance to go to the beach. It was fantastic. Summer finally came to Greece because the weather was very bad. It was, it was raining for many days, many, many days. So finally I went to the beach. It was fantastic. Uh, yeah, you know, in, in Greece, the good thing is that the sea, the beach is just 30 minutes away. Uh, clear waters, you know, sandy beaches, just fantastic. So I went there, I spent a few hours, it was just very refreshing. And uh, I came back, I had to work, I had a lot of things to do because I have to submit all the assignments for the end of the second semester of my master's program. And so um, I just also got an email a few minutes ago about the program that I might participate in. <coughs> I'll let you know when I have the news about that, I hope in the next weeks. And I just want to mention that I'm, I'm just positive, not because everything goes well, but because it's my decision to mm -hmm. just be grateful for the things that go well 
try to uh, fix the things that are not so well. And after all, if some things uh, will never be fixed, it's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not going to die. I mean, it's okay. I'm grateful about the main things. And I always think that if something doesn't go well, probably it was for my well-being. And that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. So this is how I feel today. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank so you. I just check in. How are you? Just how are you doing? And just oh. start check in. Uh, I, I, Dimitri, I, uh, uh, I, Dimitri, I was, <clears throat> before you came on, I was explaining to everyone that um, I uh, have been working for 20, 32 hours so far straight. And um, <clears throat> I'm a little exhausted, but I took a nap uh, for an hour or so before I came on to here. So, um, and uh, well, I, I, this morning I interviewed a, um, I'm not going to discuss the, the specifics or the name or anything, but I interviewed a patient um, who's of a, uh, a different um, race and, um, and um, he uh, perceived me um, to be uh, racist uh, and not to um, not to be able to understand her uh, because I'm white, um, and uh, you know that's a question, you know. Uh, for empathy, for a culture of empathy. Yeah. So you're, how were you feeling about that? Was uh... Well, I was a bit annoyed. <laughs> 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 that she didn't even give me a chance mm -hmm. uh, 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 to, you know, uh, be empathic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is feel heard? I'm not heard, but it's, yeah. It's, no, okay. So yeah, well, we can certainly dig in, go into that during the empathy circle practice uh, part. Let me just share with you the the schedule here. See how this works for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so when we I have the meetings, you know, we have I put together this agenda. So we start with the recording in each of these activities clicks through to the website, you know, our website and explains the, you know, each. So we have the recording and it clicks through to the, you know, to this that uh, talks about video recording and the issues of recording, why we record and stuff. Uh, then there's the intention setting, which we did with the candle. You can click through, read more. Uh, there's the mirrored feelings check-in, which we did. And, uh, there is, you know, you can read more about that and there's examples. Then there's the on arrival. So we were just checking in, which we just finished. So we just finished this. There's the on arrival question, which everyone wrote in. So we, next we would go and discuss uh, what we wrote, you know, just a kind of an open discussion. Uh, and then wanted to go through uh, just an outline of how everyone would like to contribute to the project. and. I created some sort of an outline, kind of a framework that we could maybe build on. And we'll just do that for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And then we go into the empathy circle component here, which is a chapter four. So we can, with chapter four, we can talk about, you know, any the chapter, the, the chapter, we'll do the summary of the chapter, you know, quick slideshow. And then we can talk about it and uh, use empathic listening. And you can talk about whatever is alive in you too. So any kind of you know issues or anything. So it's the chapter or whatever is alive in you. And then we would kind of towards we would have the next you know what, then we'd go into uh, the household. What's next? Maybe a mirrored feeling. And uh, we had talked that in the last meeting, Mimi had wanted a time where we could just have, like, towards the end, at least 10 minutes of open discussion, right? Uh, just mm -hmm. without using empathic listening. 
and uh, we then closing with intention, end recording, and that's the end of the meeting. So, uh, so that how does that sound as a general outline? Does that kind of work for everyone? Is this yeah. new? Is this something that was started developing last week when I was absent, or um, uh, I, I mean, I, I like it. Okay, it's just a different structure. It's a little different structure. I was just curious because I, yeah. I like I got confused in the very beginning when we started. Uh, you know whether I was one of one of us had been selected to, um, you know, facilitate uh, or something. Yeah, or, or empathize with your. Oh statement. right. Uh -huh. yeah. But yeah, it's like yeah. So you're just kind of like wondering what's the outline. It sounds like the outline resonates with you and. It is a structure that was kind of been developing. It's kind of been developing throughout the different groups. Uh, so, um, so the different teams. So, and we can keep modifying it. Like last time, Mimi wanted she wanted more of an open discussion time. You know, for just make her just uh, to have a non-structured time. So that's why we added that. So. Um, yeah, can I add something? Um, okay. Uh, Stefan was not here, who's not with us the previous time. So uh, we discussed uh, things like uh, how imp or we said that we we probably we will probably discuss the importance of facial expression when we uh, try to practice uh, empathic listening, right, Edwin? And I don't know if you have uh, thought about including it in our discussion today or maybe next week or I don't know what you um, I think that's where it, it's one of the chapters on silence listening silently so I think it's sort of included like reading sort of body language is that what you're meaning yeah, because what I said, Stefan, the previous time was that, okay, we're trying to practice empathic listening, but if you talk about something that was a little sad for you and I'm like, probably I'm not a very empathic listener, you know, I just don't, I, I just don't show you that I really uh, participate in your situation. Or if you say something and you are very excited and I just have a cold face, you know, I mean, I don't really think that <laughs> I really help you to feel uh, fully hurt. So that's why I would say, I, I said that what if we tried to improve this a little bit. And also about the, the time of free, for free discussion, uh, I was, um, I thought that during our discussions, you know, uh, practicing the empathic listening, we uh, quite often we have we, we feel the need to ask some more questions to the person who just shared something, and we never have the time because we we practice this uh, how can I say this uh, format of discussion. So I said, what if we have some more time to just ask questions to each other freely, and we feel that there is this this bonding uh, gets stronger and stronger between us. So we are a real group so that was all yeah that's how the 10 minute open discussion uh was added uh, so the next thing would be to talk about you know just a few minutes just a few minutes to talk about the vision uh you know what does a vision of a culture of empathy look like to you and you know i can start and we're not using empathic listings we're just sharing uh this and um so for me, the overall project that we're doing here is a culture of, is how to build a culture of empathy. And a lot of the empathy training, it seems to me, is a sort of an individualistic. You as an individual learn how to empathize with another or vice versa. And the culture of empathy is thinking of us as a group. It's like, how do we raise the level of empathy in the group? And the individualist, individual part is a component of that, but this is uh, more the seeing the cultural, uh, social systems view of how do we raise the whole level of, of empathy. Um, so that's sort of the core, and each, and you know, the, uh, and there's individual components of that. So, and how do we create a training that has an awareness of, of the, of that larger systems view of uh, of uh, empathy, so that's that's kind of just what a culture of empathy means like is to me, and it's in our group but all of society too. Like, how do we create a a country that is more empathic? You know, raise the level of empathy. Uh, so that's yeah, that's mine. So 
Maybe. Okay. I just want to say, uh, Edwin, please let me ride your coattails into the sun when you figure this one out, because uh, you're going to be a, uh, at least a mil multi-millionaire. <laughs> For <laughs> creating uh, a culture of empathy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, on a, you know, on a, even on a uh, institutional level, uh, uh, I think I shared this early on, but you know, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm in a safety net hospital in <clears throat> in New York City in in a in one of the most impoverished uh, areas in Brooklyn, and um, you know, it's a uh, the the staff of the hospital are primarily Afro Caribbean, and the patient population is 98% um, uh, Afro Caribbean, and um, you know, um, there's a, um, a disregard, um, a, a lot of disrespect among um, staff towards patients. Um, this is just one example among many, but, and, and you know, I mean, theoretically, people say it's, you know, uh, it's uh, based on a, a lot of it, you know, one theory is it's based on a lot of inward uh, racism uh, from, you know, a lot of people, like, well, there's two arguments. I mean, a lot of, uh, uh, some uh, people say, well, there's no such thing. You can't be racist toward your own kind. But of course, but of course, I think you can. I think a lot of people argue you can. And, and uh, you know, a, a, a very racist culture uh, creates racism even within groups. One, perhaps, one lighter than a darker or whatever, depending on the race or whatever, or even what the, what the, uh, what the issue is. But uh, um, Actually, can I reflect that? Can I offer a reflection what I'm hearing? Yeah. Uh, so what I'm hearing is uh, if, if we create, can create a culture of empathy, you'll become a millionaire. <laughs> it's the first part. You know how to do it. And you're saying that like your facility is it's, it's a poor impoverished area has a large, uh, 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 Caribbean population, and there's there's sort of this external racism, uh, but there's also it generates an internal racism, yeah. and so there's this this so it has a lot of difficulties, and yeah, and you're just you're kind of like you're kind of seems like you're the saying is how to build a culture of empathy within that context is yes mm -hmm. yes I mean that's just my example, but you know I mean uh, clearly if there were if there was something that worked something that uh, had some evidence to it, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, institutions would be willing to pay. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, you can always put together something soft and uh, potentially interesting or with a hook to it, but um, something that really um, uh, has some, uh, you know, outcomes associated mm -hmm. with it. Um, and uh, that has a that uh, has a catch and uh, and, and a, that people come out feeling like they have some some long lasting uh, skills that you know and that creates something amongst you know a group of people that mm. that uh, you know is that would be fascinating. Okay, so I'm hearing you, you you would find it fascinating if there was a real program that could turn an institution around to build a culture of empathy because there's these workshops or something that's kind of like soft, it's, you know, it's just not long lasting effect. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of comparing that to something that really works, has a real practicality to it. And that would be really fascinating to be able to turn an institution like where you are around to build a culture of empathy there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is that your culture of empathy vision? Do you want to go ahead and just share that, what you wrote, since you're speaking already? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess, uh, yeah, on um, um, more reflection, that's, uh, um, that's uh, what I would uh, say. Okay. Uh -huh. What you just said is kind of like what a culture of empathy would be, is that it's kind of like needed and, oh, yeah. Uh, and you said, well, do you want to re just read yours, what you said? Sure, sure. Uh, let me find it here, just one second. Um, I just wrote, um, 
uh, a culture of empathy uh, at a working level would mean everyone comes to the group prepared to seek understanding and avoid our tribal natures to differentiate ourselves based on some instinctual quick assessments by which we group people, uh, finding common ground in our humanity. Hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's almost like saying uh, it's coming with the intention. It's like there's an intention maybe that to move past that tribalism. A culture of empathy is like having an intention to foster that connection. Yeah, I'm not sure it's natural. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. not sure it's natural. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because, um, uh, you know, uh, from an evolutionary perspective, uh, what's natural is uh, to form tribe, to form, uh, to form uh, in group and out group. And, uh, you know, um, I guess as part of an institution, you could have an in group. Uh, that's part of that institution, but uh, but um, you know uh, that's been our history mm -hmm. throughout uh, throughout time. So maybe tribalism, maybe our nat nature, basic nature. You're not sure if it is possible to kind of turn things around and build a culture of empathy because it may be going against our nature. Uh, yes, uh, to some degree, I'm 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 I'm, I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, sort of like sitting with that question. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, Mimi, do you want to share? Actually, the reflection seems to help. I guess maybe we'll do a reflection. Do you want to reflect whatever Mimi says on this? Sure. Sure. I think it's probably good to bring that in. Okay, so should I read it? Yeah, you can read it and then uh, Stefan will reflect. Okay, so it looks like an oasis in a world that seems to lose part of its humanity. I think that this vision will answer to many people's need for deeper connection and warmer relationships with others. Uh, we all need it, especially today after reading about Compassion Chapter 4 of the book we use in our meetings. I felt how much better people could communicate and connect with each other if they had ever heard and practiced genuine Empathy and compassion in their life. Uh, the vision of a culture of empathy is the fresh water in the thirsty heart of multiple people all around the world. Yes, complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Uh, well, um, uh, <clears throat> what? Are you shocked? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just I have to. I have to gather my. Uh, self, make sure I heard you, because uh, I'm reading what you're saying, but I heard what you said was different. I'm getting a little confused here. Okay, but um, fresh water in the thirst, oh, thirsty heart, an oasis. Uh, wow, that, that, that's, um, I can envision, I can see it. Uh, it sounds very refreshing. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this, you know, <laughs> like summertime in Greece, something like this. Okay, can I can I answer back? I mean, what should I do now? Uh, do you feel heard? Do you feel you feel yeah, heard? Definitely. I think okay, I'm that's it. That's all we wanted was you to feel okay, heard. Okay, so I uh, can't say anything else. Okay. Okay. If you want to say, do you want to build on that, what you just yes. said? Is there more to add? Until you feel heard, fully heard. I feel fully heard. Okay. <laughs> Once again, thank you. Uh, so what I wanted to clarify is that empathy is not just uh, a, you know, cute thing for me, you know, nice thing. Okay, let's do something together. I take it extremely seriously and I uh, identify people's needs for something more meaningful. Uh, not only in education, but also in, in uh, personal relations. <clears throat> I see that people feel disconnected, empty. They just, they just, uh, some people can name it. Some other people feel just a gap inside them. And they don't know how to call it. But I think that, I mean, we really deserve better connections between us. I mean, I just, I would be very happy if before I leave this world, I could do something better. I mean, that's why I study. That's why I do all this. 
I mean, money is good. Of course, we need some money to survive, fine. But for me, being a, being a human being means that you try to, to, to make the world a better place for everybody, not just for myself. And really, after reading this, uh, this was chapter four for tonight on compassion, I mean, I, I really loved it. The person, I mean, uh, he could describe compassion so, so well that, hey, empathy is not only about being cur curious in what you are saying, I'm genuinely interested in your well-being and I have a real and authentic interest and I really want to to show you that hey I'm here I mean I can listen to you and if I can do something for you I can definitely do it so it spoke right to my heart and I said yes this is what I want to work on so the, the culture of empathy is something very serious absolutely serious for me so empathy is uh is is uh, moving you to action, you know. Yes. Uh, it's not just a idle, um, fake thing. It's something real. And it's deep and it's meaningful and it causes change and, and it you know to help other people be their best uh, and. know who they are yeah right and but being the best doesn't mean that you are the most uh, well-known professional or the wealthiest mm -hmm. being the best means that you can touch your real self you are you are just authentic. You're who you are. No matter if you're successful according to how the society defines success, but you are just a positive and nice guy. That's it. <clears throat> No matter who you are. No, no uh, matter who you are. That, you know, that everybody deserves uh, a basic level of um, listening, attention, care. Uh, yeah. So, should I say something now? Do you feel heard, fully heard? Just say whenever you're fully heard and we'll move on to the next. Yeah, do I have more time? Uh, sure, if you feel you're not complete yet. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, of course I feel fully heard. Just want to add some. I can add it maybe later. Okay, yes, okay. thank you. Great. So, uh, the next thing, that was just looking at the vision of a culture of empathy, but trying to get a baseline where everyone is on that, because that's kind of where we're moving towards, and really appreciate that, uh, Stefan, about the uh, you know, an institution, how do we transform an institution and, you know, this, and, and the steps uh, for doing that. Um, so the next thing, uh, I want to just do a quick uh, uh, overview here is I'm going to do a screen share. Just wanted to get another baseline. We did uh, this a little bit in the last meeting. So there's this uh, activity we have. Oh, let me make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> is this is farther down the page, go down to page three, you know, on the Google Doc. Uh, you'll see it says how to contribute. How would you like to contribute to the development of the Empathy MOOC design project? So this is just getting sort of a baseline. You know, it's nothing, no big commitment right now. But uh, so, so we're trying to, I, I put out some different ways that people will be able to, team members, you know, on this project will be able to contribute. So it says here, we're trying to set up a you know, productive framework so everyone can contribute in the way that they enjoy and for, uh, and, uh, for the development. And so the basic is to you know, do what we're doing in these groups where we do, uh, we're reading a chapter and then we show up and we do the exercises. Um, you know, just in the two-hour meeting, that's sort of like the basic level. And then there's the co-designing of the training. So how many hours a week, you know, can everyone contribute? You know, I'm, I can do full times. So I'm just throwing myself into this, you know, project as a primary project. Um, and we have a six-week, you know, initial commitment, and that'll only get us through chapters six, you know, one through six. 
And then the other groups have uh, extended their commitment to a full 16 weeks. So, you know, after six weeks, you can kind of check and see how things are working and then commit to going through the full series of the book. Uh, you can go through uh, skills, like uh, I have the following skills I can contribute, you know, empathy skills, I've got technical and organizational skills, social media, you know, do a lot on Facebook with our groups. Then there's um, design and activity. So everyone can take on an activity, a lesson, like in the book, there's try it exercises. So one thing you can do is develop a, uh, a, uh, an activity, you know, write it up uh, and present it, or you could design an activity from the ground up, uh, and then you could facilitate and, and you know, and, and facilitate one of those activities. Like, uh, we haven't done it yet. I think it starts in chapter six or so. There's some try it activities, and so you can actually facilitate some of those. We're going to set up some groups, to, a group to do articulate the vision of a culture of empathy. And we're sort of started on that. But we really want to write up, like, what is the, you know, overall framework of a culture of empathy? You know, write some copy about it. Maybe even create a lesson about what a culture of empathy is. Yeah, you can do technical, you know, production, you know, website design, create video clips. Like the introduction to the, um, like how to do an empathy circle. I like to, one of the first projects is create a little video that of how to do it, samples, so that it could be anywhere. So, you know, Stefan, you could have in your class or whatever, you could say, watch this video beforehand. It would give a really step-by-step -step example. It'd be, you know, just something you could show, uh, <clears throat> you know, a class and we could, anybody on the internet could see it. Uh, you could lead and facilitate a training. So, you know, we're gonna have 16 lessons. Uh, you, know, you can lead and facilitate one. You know, I've been kind of facilitating, but you can also become, you know, facilitate one. So you can just say, if you're wanting to do one of these, you can go through and just, you know, click put an X, you know, like I, I have X's in all of them already. Uh, <laughs> and, because that's what I'm, I'm kind of doing, got my hand in everything. And then, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah, I'm just laughing. Yeah, I mean, Edwin, you're like, uh, you're a monster. You're a <laughs> <laughs> I'm an empathy development monster. Pushing ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, it, uh, um, yeah, oh, anyway, I'll move on here. Then there's the empathy activism. So the, this training is a bit different in the sense it's, it has different components than most, than most training. One is sort of based around the empathy circle, a kind of a practice of doing it. You know, you're not just like learning some didactic, you know, educational thing, but you learn, you read a little bit, you come together and practice empathic <clears throat> listening. And every lesson you, you learn something to hopefully make you a better listener and empathic speaker. But, uh, and we're also looking at the empathy activism. So it's really to build that culture of empathy uh, in society. You know, how do you change around that? facility where you're working, Stefan, or how do you, Mimi, you know, create a culture of empathy in the teams or the trainings that you're, you know, facilitating or in the community. And uh, we've been doing it with the empathy tent. We take this empathy tent out. We were just out there last weekend. I don't know if you saw the video, but there was some rallies. We set up the empathy tent. We offered listening. Uh, we, you know, we're kind of advocating for a culture of empathy out at this rally. There was like 1,500 people, you know, advocating about uh, the border, you know, issue that they have here with families being separated. So we had the tent there, and there's a little video clip that I sent out. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. So you can, and some of the people in our group are setting up empathy tents of their own. So there's, you know, somebody in LA, there's someone in in Kansas, setting one up. People have talked about setting them up in New York, actually. Some of our members or team is there. 
and somebody else is just talking about Seattle. So you can set up these tents, you kind of make a public presence, offer listening and kind of advocate for empathy. So if you scroll down the page, if you just want to take, you know, just take uh, five minutes, just go through and just check what, you know, uh, uh, where you are, you know, just kind of get a baseline of where everyone is in terms of time and ability to, to do this. So now how do um, we know Demetra wants already? Yeah, that's the question. No, I mean, it says Demetra wants to know options for being, I mean, how, how did you know that? Oh, at the last meeting we did a, on, we, on, a, on the last meeting we did a on arrival question. Okay. So that was, those are the things she mentioned. So I just made notes of it. So it's already kind of pre-filled here. And uh, so those are the things I, think I heard. And and in the beginning, Stefan, I told you that we had a discussion. So part of the discussion was uh, this thing as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you just want to take a, we'll just take five minutes, you know, we'll, if you just want to scroll down, you're on page four of the document, Mimi and Stefan, you're on page five. So just go through, put a check mark in, in the ones that you're kind of interested in. We'll have a short, you know, review of that. And it gives us a baseline of, you know, where everyone is because over the coming weeks, we'll slowly, you know, start developing some projects to work on. <clears throat> Yeah, I have a question though. Sure. I mean, uh -huh. if I just go to, let's say, design activity lesson, I just add an X there. How do you know that I am the one who has this intention? Uh, it has your name at the top there of the page, on page four. If you scroll oh. down to page four of our document. Oh, okay. Now I understand the structure. Oh, okay, okay, clear. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. And when, was, when you say it, with how many hours per week can you contribute? You mean uh, more than two hours a week that we meet? Yeah, there's, we had asked for about three hours for reading material and stuff, you know, two to three hours, but the reading is only about two to seven minutes for the reading. Yes. Uh, so there's, yeah, so it's just like, you know, how much do you feel you could contribute to uh, de designing a lesson or, you know, just kind of at least a ballpark. <clears throat> okay. And this is not hard and fast. We just wanted to get a baseline, you know, which is just the general sense. So we know where everyone is in terms of, uh, of their interests. The last part seems the scariest to me. Uh, do the empathy activism and the uh, facil facilities and empathy circles between people. That, that man, that's, uh, that's, uh, and uh, taking part, in, and, I, and I just wonder what those empathy tents are like. Uh, I just want to make a comment. Um, uh, you know, well, there's, you know, in a in a in a in a formal kind of psychotherapeutic relationship or whatever. Um, you know. Uh, if you haven't ever, if you if you've ever if you ever really wanted to see like what I consider a model of how like Carl Rogers did this, I love uh, something called the Gloria tapes. Um, oh yeah, uh -huh. there are three um, mm -hmm. in I've the nineteen fifty. Um, uh, they're on YouTube. You can watch it. You can, and so they took uh, Carl Rogers, Fritz Perls, and uh, Ellison. I think it is Ellis, I think Ellis. These were the uh, fathers of uh, psychotherapy anyway uh, in the 50s. Anyway, so they've all interviewed the same patient. So Carl Rogers interviewed Gloria using, um, <clears throat> you know, client-based psychotherapy. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's... You know, um, I f this is my. I, I wonder, I, Dimitri. I'm going to come out. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to say. I'm going to give. I'm going to say something about you. You tell me. I may be off completely. Um, there's something to me. It seems like you, in a sense, and have, feel like sometimes the empathy circle is a little stilted 
or like it doesn't um, provide you uh, the opportunity to um, ask further questions to really you feel like it leaves you wanting at the end uh, sometimes and um, and, uh, and and you know I, I think uh, and we're No, nope, breaking up a little bit there. <clears throat> uh oh, his uh, connection seems to be. Maybe it got lost. Okay, you still there? <clears throat> 